This poem is called, Who's Gonna Save Them When Ghosts Live Here Now? I wasn't around to see the tears, blood being spilt, guns blazing, hoses gushing. But I see their faces gazing somewhere, thinking about way back when. I can put my fingers in the dents and trace where it all began, tears rushing creating rivers. Their faces tell storylines that seeped in the bloodlines. Complacency in empty homes and communities, fragmented, lost hope, no hope. A city that's forgotten them. I see the leftovers. Only a handful of leftovers. Gun shells on the grounds have created another art piece. Murals, Decorate empty walls, vacant buildings, storefronts, and homes. Tell the story. Where have the people gone? Who's going to save them when ghosts live here now? Who's occupying the place, making space? Because we've been uprooted, dragged, pushed, and pulled. Memories tag along like loose cotton balls on clothes, and the violence continues. Who's going to be brave enough to stop it? creating a martyr without a cause, welcoming bullets, and excited about the life, dead men walking. I wonder what it would look like if someone would just take them all. Nobody's gonna take me away from my community. Our spirits remain here until you listen. I have a few more poems that's in that book as well as in my book. I'm gonna tell you more about that for, come pretty soon. This next one is not published, but it's also about San Francisco. It's called Blackness Saves. Hallelujah. San Francisco finally has its first black woman mayor. After she was cheated this honor because some thought her not worthy, she had to wait her turn yet again so whiteness could teach her how it's done. Mass has been doing it for years, trying to make excuses to prove how great America is. And, but let's be clear, America has never been great. There's evidence along the trail of tears and race riots last for years. Today, blackness haters have gone viral, so you can't forget that black lives matter. I never, I've never been one for speeches, whether great ones or well-intended ones, it makes no difference to me. I tune out when that part is televised because when there's business as usual and the cameras are off, where are you? And there she goes to save the day on her walking tour, smiling through it all, even as the first needle shows evidence of a people that's been forgotten. Her smile is radiant. Her background, she's from the hood. Maybe I would like her more if she finds a way to bring black folks back to their neighborhood before they're extinct. I still miss Barack, President Barack Obama's smile and commanding voice. He stood regal, deemed, uh oh, excuse me. Why does this happen? He stood regal. Uh oh. deemed to make the job done, and he was left with a mess. But he, too, had blackness haters. Even today, as he travels to Africa, blackness haters keep hating. No one is perfect, no matter how you try. Trust me, I know. I've tried. But I will forgive if you admit you're wrong. So my name is Aquila, and it's a Latin. It's also an eagle. It's one of the constellations. I found out that my ancestors on my dad's side are from Barcelona, Spain. And there's a lot more about them, but I don't really know too much about. I have um, a writing poem, a writing prompt that I did for um, the Black Arts Business Movement District in Oakland. Um, it's a, it was th during the Women's History Month, Women Write Workshop. My name lives in the mist. My name lives in the mist. I am mist. Droplets drip from aching breasts coddling my babe. I'm exquisite as dew drops. 
Sweat glands peek through after drinking another energy drink. I like fruit punch best. I am as intricate as footprints, as long as, and I long to follow you, which hasn't been done before. You see, I was never taught to follow. I am my own. I am fierce as a radical monarch, curious as a girl can be, making my mark so girls can be just like me and better. I'm from Vallejo. And my poem, or this memoir that I'm going to um, share with you is from Verses, Voices, and Visions of Vallejo by Vallejo Port Laureate D.L. Lang. This poem, or this memoir, this memoir excerpt is called Home is Where the Heart Is. I thought I had given up on love. I thought I was free from the disappointment. I, like so many others, became victim to what it was. How does one resurrect a memory that should stay buried? But the story needs to be told. So with reluctance, I try to tell it. I grew up here in Valley Joe. Not really sure if I should be proud of that because here is where I learned about the cycle of fear and love and hurt. And I've been searching for home ever since. Have you ever wanted the best place to tell your story? Where do you start? How does it begin? Especially when you can't remember much but pain. Sometimes through a picture, you can try to piece together forgotten memories. But in the midst of constant pain and disappointment, there was so much beauty surrounding us. The landscape was painted by vivid, vivid memories of events and attractions I had visited through my stay here. Juneteenth festivals, parades, Marine World Africa USA it was back then. And today, the amuse park is renamed Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. And there was a Vallejo ship, shipyard, Vallejo Musical Theater, Dan Foley Park and Blue Rock Springs. I can still hear the peacock's re repetitive call and response. Throughout my childhood, I tried to draw from memory butterflies and birds such as these and had rock and marble collections to pass the time. For exercise, we walked the marina waterfront and even got worn out in Venetia State Park. We walked everywhere, leaving a trail of tears from Echo Summit onto Mini Drive and then turned right into the, bu the busy Sonoma Boulevard that seemed to last for hours. Each hunk got us closer to our destination, or may maybe it was a sign of approval. I wonder if folks were jealous because we had the energy they wished for. But what they didn't know was that we had to keep walking to be on time to our due diligence and clean the church, which was then placed on Virginia Street. Now, after years of perfect planning and prayer, it is painted on Broadway Boulevard. We walked for exercise, or maybe it was because we didn't have money for the bus or even a taxi. I think my mommy wanted to make sure all our energy was gone so we'd take our nap without complaint or hesitation. And when we lived in the brown house, we banged out the Jane Fonda's exercise tapes on VHS and sang along with the Free to Be Thin cassette tape by Neva Coyle and Marie Ch Chapion and read from its paired Christian book that promised you'll find happiness in Jesus and live healthy. We even made yummy food from the Free to Be Thin cookbook. My mommy really was on a quest to be healthy back then, and she made sure to include us in her search for outer beauty and Jesus. And then there was a JFK library where I, I spent my beloved days and weekends exploring the scores and scores of books. I planned my next adventure there and was ecstatic when as a preteen I got paid to clean those books. My mommy chose to homeschool my sister and I, probably because everyone in the 80s and 90s seemed to do it. We were the church mice, the perfect little brown ones that went with my mom everywhere. I'm not sure why we were called church mice, but for years the name stuck until we grew up and left the church to seek out our life for our own. And then the congregation, congregation sort of forgot us, which was fine. We moved here, it was quiet. Not too many buildings were built, just miles and miles of brush and grass. At first it was the three of us, then my sister came, and then they got divorced. Years later, my mommy remarried, then I don't remember too much, or I try not to. It's just fog where memory should be. I was told that I blocked it out. Can both good and bad memories be resurrected? But who wants to remember being abused by the ones that are supposed to love you? To this day, I still wonder why my mommy didn't have the courage to pack all our clothes and belongings, or maybe we could have left them. We just had to leave. When we did finally leave, my sister and I were grown with children of our own, 
but a part of me stayed to be witness to help gather the pieces so I could share with you. So I'm a survivor. In, in 2010, I decided that I wanted to rewrite my story. I was abused by my dad and my stepdad. And so ever since 2010, I've been kind of going out and telling, telling others who also need to be healed from abuse or um, surviving sexual violence. I'm going to share a poem called The Body Is Not An Apology. The body is not an apology, and I don't have time to apologize. My life is my own, and I try it on for size, size 16 to be exact. I enjoy these rows, big butt, big breasts, big everything. I will not hide my everything from you. I will not hide. My body's not an apology. I will not use these wheels to beg for charity. I am not a case to be left on the shelf, an unsolved mystery, because I can do anything. With my teeth, I mix colors on canvas. With my feet, I can hear the heartbeat and glide to my own beat on various stages for millions to like my YouTube page and call me an inspiration. My body is not an apology. I can go back to school and get my doctorate, expand my mind again, demanding that folks like me have the right to do anything you do because honestly, we can do it better. I am the champion two times over spewing forth my spoken word. Only the best of the best with the heart to hear can receive this blessing. Here I am, woman radiant, adorned with hearing aids behind my ears, a beautiful accessory that I wear proudly. My body is not an apology, and I will not apologize. I will not apologize. So why don't you try me on for size? I am in love and not ashamed. So the next few um, poems I'm going to read are from my book, Stop Hurting and Dance, published by Pacino Press, a, a local press in Oakland. Um, yeah, I've had some really good moments with this press. And also, it's great to see your own work being published. So I encourage you guys, if you are poets or writers, find a way to get it published. This one is called Reflection. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who was the fairest of them all? Seeing things with different eyes, wearing a new pair of lens, fully aware, I reflect on them. Standing on the corner, hoping, wishing to be seen, to be understood. Innocence was taken when she was just a little princess. Now she is forced to be the queen of the hood. I concentrate on them. I pray for them. And I see them slightly overweight, stuffing bellies with chocolate cupcakes full of raspberry jelly consuming them for breakfast, sometimes for lunch and for dinner because it's cheap. She's invisible anyway. She would never look like the Vogue model grazing covers of magazines. She eats the herd away and keeps eating and eating until there's nothing left. She remains invisible to this day. I reflect on the old woman who has stories to say, but they are falling on deaf ears. No one has the time to listen. If only they knew that she had the key that would open our doors to freedom. If only they knew that her gray hair symbolized wisdom. You will learn much when you listen. I know because I've been there. Many places I learned in stages. I heard it whispered in the wind and fell in love with my reflection. My mirror has many things to say. I wonder, what does your mirror have to say? I'm going to end kind of where I began, and it's called Mama Africa. Hello, Mama Africa. How are you? I long to hear you whisper, all is well. But what I can tell, that is not to be. I hear your heart murmur. Your moans echo in the breeze in the trees. Tell us the truth how it used to be. Mama Africa, I hear you. I feel your heartbeat, harmonic, melodic sounds, syncopated rhythms, sounds of laughter, freedom, wisdom. Same sounds we're used to. Bright colors, red, gold, green. The black star will lead us, feed us. How can we keep letting them abuse you, acting all mean? When the gold rush ended, it didn't end with you. 
Every day they steal your precious gold, jewels, diamonds, and pearls, preying on little boys and girls. What makes them so bold? Taking from the earth, rich soil of the gold and ivory coast, we heard about since birth, not really knowing your worth. Through you, I heard about those kings and queens who ruled in dignity, such majesty, reigned victoriously. I long to emulate you since I came from you. Please, tell me how to get back to you. We've created a world we have no business being in, living in a world, not our world. The sins of the Father have no end. Satan is trying, our souls are crying. Oh, goddess, breathe life into us. Show us forgiveness. Our masses continue to rule over us, the sons and daughters of Ashanti. Thank you. <laughs>